sir. So my name is Pradeep, and uh, thanks for all this wonderful lecture. I wasn't really much interested in coming here, but it's really been an enlightening one. So I want to get your views. Like, why do you think uh, taking milk out from the cows is uh, a kind of animal cruelty? Because uh, in uh, many of our villages also there are cow keepers. So what they do is uh, like they nourish them, they love their animals, they took care of them, and in turn they took the milk out of them. And uh, I don't see any cruelty in that. It's a kind of living in peace and harmony between an animal and a human born together. So like a mutual relationship. Yeah. Mutual. Yeah. Okay, I will give answer on that. First, I'll have to answer in two ways. First of all, before we talk about what you see in your village, we'll go to the what's happening in the dairy industry because 99% of all dairy products you see on supermarket shelves do not come from what you're saying. They come from the dairy industry, these giant dairy corporations. You agree, right? All the meat, dairy and stuff, sorry, all the milk, ghee curd and stuff. So first of all, in the dairy industry, um, a female ma'am, understand that milk does not come from cows. Milk comes from mothers. Only mothers produce milk. In order to get milk, you'll have to first take a female and force her to become a mother. In dairy farms, cows and buffaloes are forcefully tied up and a person injects them forcefully with bull semen. It's called as artificial insemination. What they first do is they take a bull and they make him mount on this shape object that sexually arouses him. It looks like a female bull, female cow, sorry. And then they attach, I know this sounds sick, but this is what's happening right now. They attach this giant condom to him and then into his anus, they insert an electrode that gives electrical charges that forces him to ejaculate into the condom. This is how they collect bull semen. This is what they're doing to the male cows right now. Then this is taken and cryogenically frozen. This sperm is then artificially put into the female cow. Now, if a female human were tied up and forcefully made pregnant against her will, we would call that in society as rape. But if you do this to cows and buffaloes, we call it as artificial insemination. We just change the word slightly and we feel less guilty about it. Then once she does give birth, in case the baby born is a male calf, he is taken from the mother because a male calf cannot produce milk. He's of no use to the dairy industry. So he is taken and he is killed for his skin and then she is milk. In case the baby born is a female, she will be given just enough milk to keep her alive while the remainder milk is all taken and put into packets and stole to us. Once this female comes to age, she will also undergo the same routine as her mother and this cycle perpetually goes on forever. Once a female cow or buffalo becomes old, can no longer give birth and can no longer be considered useful to the dairy industry, they too are sold off to the slaughterhouse. Now this is what's happening in conventional dairy farms. You're talking about what about people from the village side who say that they care for the cows, who do not do bad things or cruelty to the cows and who is a mutual relationship is what you're saying. Well, the first question I'll ask you is, do you think as a human being, we have the right to forcefully make another animal pregnant, whether you do it through artificial insemination or you tie up a cow and force a bull on her, aren't we interfering in the reproductive cycle? Do you feel that way? A little bit. A little bit, okay. Understand again, when we are talking, see, I am not being forcefully made pregnant and neither are you. So again, it's easy for us to say a little bit, but if we were to use empathy and put ourselves in the animal's shoes, we are literally making her carry a baby in her for nine months, which is not a comfortable thing. Human women get to choose when they want to have a baby in them for nine months. Animal females are not given this luxury. They have to have it based on our requirement. Again, see, we're pushing the extrinsic value onto these animals. Intrinsically, she doesn't want to get pregnant. She has her own decision for that. So we are making her pregnant. That is firstly a wrong thing. Second thing and most importantly, what do you think happens to the male calves, be it even like a small scale dairy farm or a grand scale dairy farm, if the baby, let's say I have 10 cows with me, I'm running a small scale dairy farm, I make all 10 get pregnant, all 10 give birth, I have three females and seven males. What am I to do with seven bulls right now? Do you have any, even small scales, do you know what they do? They cannot because a male bull will actually eat more food than a female. They eat more, they drink more water and they do not provide me any return. Imagine this, if I'm giving someone food and water for free, they're not even making, helping me make money. So these males are always taken and they are given off to the slaughterhouse. In fact, my friend Mr. Muthu was having a convo with me yesterday night and he told me that he actually went personally and checked in small scale dairy farms here in Tiruchi and asked the people, where are the male calves? And he told, I give them to the temples. He went to the temple and asked, where are the male calves? Oh, people tend to buy them and use them, we give them off, basically to the slaughterhouse. When he went back to the dairy farm and asked him, dude, you are giving them to the temple, you're saying, but did you know the temple is giving them to the slaughterhouse? Well, that's the temple's problem. That's not mine. 
that sin doesn't fall on me. I have given it to God's place. So understand that a male calf is of no use to dairy industry always. We, there is no use for them. And if someone were to have a substitute, understand a dairy business, like any other business, is a business. It's primarily done to, not primarily, it's only done to make money. That's the whole point. If a dairy farmer cannot make a profit, why is he going to do that business? Having a bull is a loss. They will have to kill the bull. There is no choice. I challenge you, my friend. You're from which part of India? I'm from Delhi. Delhi, okay. Whichever dairy farm that you believe is doing a good job, just do the following things. Just go to the dairy farm and ask them how many cows are there. Count the number of cows. Demand to see the corresponding number of children because without having consistently giving birth to children, which is a tolling task on their bodies, they can't produce milk, right? So if I say a cow has been there with him for six years, she's probably being made pregnant since her second year of life. That means you should be able to see five calves, but you probably cannot see any of them. Also ask him, why are there only young cows and buffaloes? Where are the old ones? Sold off. Where are the male ones? Sold off. Is it all right to make them pregnant? These are all wrong things. I know in our religious texts and stuff, there's always things where they praise consuming dairy products, but Lord Krishna is shown drinking dairy products. But to that I say, that's a different yuga. Lord Krishna lived in the Treta Yuga. We are living in the Kali Yuga. We cannot compare his actions. We cannot compare his actions in that yuga to what we do to cows and buffaloes today. This is my answer. There is no, if you want to avoid cruelty and harm to cows and buffaloes, you have to be vegan. There is no other way. That's my answer. So there's just a marketing strategy that they use, like on their products, like in ghee or butter. Yeah, I mean, they put, they actually stick happy pictures of cows. Have you seen that they even, why only dairy? Even in meat companies, I saw a stall in Chennai where it said something protein. There's a chicken standing there flexing his muscles. I mean, I was like, to the what level are they brainwashing people? They're showing a chicken as if he's smiling and flexing his muscles. So yeah, it's all marketing. It's all lies. First thing is dairy is not necessary for our human sustenance because we are not dairy cows. We are teenage, adolescent, or adult human beings, we don't need this stuff. Number two, when you choose to consume dairy products, you will have to go through forced impregnations, killing of males, and eventually killing of the females when they are no longer profitable. Because if you don't do these things, you cannot run a successful dairy farm. You will go into loss. That's the reason. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah.